so I watched this movie on Tubi, just on a whim. I'd never seen it before, and it was a lot better than I thought it would be. Or at least it had a really great setup. This movie starts off very strong. Things kind of go downhill after the first half hour. But uh, Don Johnson and Mickey Rourke are so good together, it almost makes up for this movie having kind of a shitty plot. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man three stars. If you like The Last Boy Scout or if you're just looking for well-made R-rated action movies from the 90s, this is one you should probably watch. It's basically Easy Rider meets Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid with like a big dystopian future element sprinkled into it. Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man is free on Tubi right now, and there's a Shout Factory Blu-ray release. No 4K release uh, yet, but it is a possibility, as this movie seems to be kind of a cult classic. Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man has great acting, great cinematography, pretty good stunts and effects, even though a lot of the action is kind of cheesy and kind of feels like more like something from the 80s than from the 90s. But again, what really makes this movie work and makes it work even more than it probably should is the acting and the chemistry between the main characters. Don Johnson and Mickey Rourke are great in this film. Supposedly they were both very difficult on set and didn't really get along, but none of that comes through in their performances. These guys sound like old friends and their dialogue scenes can be pretty entertaining. Let's squeeze the trigger, Harley. Don't yank it, not your dick. Squeeze. Harley Davidson The Marlboro Man was a critical and financial failure. It grossed only $7 million against a budget of $23 million and is somewhat of an anomaly amongst the rest of the director's films. It was directed by Simon Winsor, the Australian filmmaker who directed Quigley Down Under. He was a very successful TV director and this was supposed to be his big break into Hollywood. A $23 million action film with a great cast. Unfortunately, things didn't quite work out. Uh, after this film, Winsor went on to direct Free Willy in 1993, which was a huge hit. It ended up uh, becoming a whole series of films. After the success of Free Willy, Winsor had a string of even bigger bombs. First, Disney's Operation Dumbo Drop, and then uh, The Phantom starring Billy Zane. This movie was made without the approval of Marlboro or Harley Davidson. And the first thing that you see is a caption letting you know that no company has approved, sponsored, or endorsed the title or content of the film. It's, it's pretty crazy they were able to get away with this. And it's not just Harley and Marlboro. There's a whole string of characters named after trademarked alcohol brands. The Marlboro Man's love interest is a woman named Virginia Slim. I guess there was no point in suing this film because it didn't really make any money. It does feel uh, kind of weird. Though. I don't think you'd be able to get away with this now, especially not with Harley Davidson. That seems like a big bankable name. The opening scene of the film takes place on Independence Day 1996. Mickey Rourke stands backlit in this uh, dingy neon red soaked motel room. There's a naked woman in the bed and he's smoking a cigarette while he watches the 4th of July fireworks. Uh, Harley Davidson then suits up in his all leather motorcycle outfit while Bon Jovi's Wanted Dead or Alive starts up. Which I know that, that sounds pretty lame, but this is actually a pretty cool opening despite Mickey Rourke's uh, European style briefs and his weird two-tone leather outfit. Harley Davidson The Marlboro Man was beautifully shot by cinematographer David Egby. The same cinematographer who was able to perfectly shape the light on Christopher Lambert's testicles in the film Fortress. So this guy really knows how to take a scene involving a naked woman and shoot it in the worst way possible. During the opening title sequence, Harley Davidson travels from West Texas to Burbank, California. And there's a great sequence of shots of Harley Davidson driving through the oil refineries of Texas into the barren desert and finally uh, Burbank, California. Lots of nods to Easy Rider and the cinematography. Now, I don't know much about Harley Davidson's in general, but if you're into Harley's, this movie should be on your list. But also, if you're into Harley's, you're probably retired, so you do have lots of uh, free time to watch old movies. When Harley gets to Burbank, he pulls into a gas station that's being held up by two unsavory looking characters, and he disarms both men in short order. That's basically the intro for the Mickey Rourke character, Harley Davidson. He's a biker, he's a tough guy, the ladies love him, and he's more or less a force for good. The whole thing feels kind of over the top and goofy from the outfits to the 
the huge handgun. And usually I'd make fun of Mickey Rourke for being a phony tough guy. But here's the thing, Mickey Rourke is actually tough. This is one of the last films Mickey Rourke made before he left acting to pursue a boxing career at almost 40 years old, which is a crazy thing to do. And what's even crazier is that he did pretty good as a boxer. In 1991, Rourke, who was a former amateur boxer, decided that he had to go back to boxing because he felt that he was, and I quote, self-destructing and had no respect for himself as an actor. Rourke was undefeated in eight fights with six wins, four by knockout and two draws. He fought internationally in countries including Spain, uh, Japan, and Germany. So Mickey Rourke did better as a pro boxer than CM Punk did in MMA, and that's, that's way less of a leap. He did become, and I quote, appallingly disfigured as a result, but as far as his record goes, he actually did pretty good. The weird thing here is that the boxing injuries made Mickey Rourke a more interesting looking actor later in his career, where he did some of his best work. Hollywood didn't really fuck with Mickey Rourke until he did Sin City, which led to his role in The Wrestler. And The Wrestler is really top notch. Probably Darren Aronofsky's best film, and no one else could have played that character. It was just perfect casting. Great performance, way better than Brendan Fraser in that fat suit. Next, Harley Davidson shows up to a bar where the Marlboro Man, played by Don Johnson, is hustling a guy, a man credited as Big Indian. And he's a big Indian. And this character is played by Branscombe Richmond, the actor who played Bobby Sixkiller on Renegade. Big Indian refuses to pay the Marlboro Man, so Don Johnson attacks him with a pool cue and a big fight breaks out. What's interesting about uh, Don Johnson's role here is that similar to the director, Don Johnson also wanted to transition into features. Miami Vice had just ended. Unfortunately for Don Johnson, this movie flopped and he was never able to really make that transition into features. After Harley and the Marlboro Man fight their way out of the biker bar, they head to their old hangout, the Rock and Roll Bar and Grill. And this is where we meet a whole uh, diverse cast of characters. The owner-operator, played by Julius Harris, his son Jimmy, played by Giancarlo Esposito, who most will probably know from Breaking Bad. Jimmy's sister Lulu is played by Vanessa Williams. Jose Cuervo is played by Eloy Casados. Uh, he is mute and has a big scar on his throat, which is never really explained. He looks like he got like a Colombian necktie or something. And finally, Lulu's husband Jack Daniels is played by former pro wrestler Big John Studd. Jack Daniels holds a grudge against Harley for having an affair with his wife, and they have a pretty entertaining fight before uh, Jack Daniels throws Harley through a plate glass window. This might be one of Big John Studd's better film roles. He was in probably a half dozen movies in the late 80s, early 90s. He passed away a few years after this film. Very young. Big people are like big dogs. They just don't live very long. They get hip dysplasia, they get hit by cars, all types of issues that come with having the medical condition known as retard strength. After hearing the bank is raising the bar's lease to 2.5 million, Harley comes up with a plot to rob one of the bank's armored vehicles as a way to make the necessary funds and save all of his friends' jobs. The heist goes pretty smooth until the bank's private security team shows up, a gang dressed in black bulletproof dusters with assault rifles. The group is led by Alexander, who's played by Daniel Baldwin. And this is where the movie starts to fall off for me. The security team is kind of boring. I, I was like half expecting Daniel Baldwin to end up being a robot or something. That's how stiff and uninteresting his performance is. Jack Daniel shows up at the last minute and saves the gang by sliding his Harley into the security team's car, then igniting a trail of gasoline, causing an explosion, which gives the gang the opportunity to escape with what they think is money, but actually turns out to be a large quantity of a futuristic drug called Crystal Dream. The film does mention Crystal Dream earlier, but you never see anyone do this drug. It's kind of weird. The whole future drug thing barely plays into the film and feels kind of out of place. Uh, a lot of this film just feels generally ill-conceived. It's well shot, it's well acted, it's well directed, but it's just not a great story despite the effort put into the production aspects of the film. The security team answers to CEO Chance Wilder, who's played by Tom Sizemore, a very young, bright-eyed Tom Sizemore. Uh, he's the evil CEO. He's using the bank to traffic drugs into Burbank. Kind of a forgettable character and performance. Tia Carrera pops in as Wilder's assistant, 
and they managed to put her in a very unflattering dress. It's ridiculous. How do you manage to make Tia Carrera's ass look bad? I hope they fired the wardrobe guy from this movie. First he dressed Mickey Rourke up like a NASCAR driver, and then he put Tia Carrera in a dress that makes her ass look like a garbage can lid. After realizing they've stolen a bunch of drugs from the bank, Harley and Marlboro head into the bank and offer to sell it back to Chance Wilder for the $2.5 million they need to pay the bar's new lease. They make the deal and they make the exchange for the cash, but the security team tracks them to the bar using a tracking device planted in the money, and they kill the entire crew except for Harley and Marlboro, who manage to escape with the cash. Now the main characters are on the run from a Chance Wilder's thug. That's basically the main plot. There's a subplot involving a love interest uh, of the Marlboro man. And that's a woman who goes by the name Virginia Slim, like the cigarette. You get it? Virginia Slim is played by the lovely Chelsea Field, and uh, she's a female biker cop who's engaged to another police officer. I don't know, this part of the movie doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There's a great scene where uh, Marlboro takes Harley's motorcycle, and he's like driving around recklessly. And he gets into a chase with a biker cop. Eventually, you know, he gets pulled over, and it turns out the biker cop is his love interest, and they have a, uh, a tryst. And then uh, the next day, she tells him that she's engaged to another police officer. But where's this police officer? Why isn't he at her house? He must live there because then the Marlboro man steals his motorcycle. It's kind of weird. But like I said, subpar plot aside. This movie's kind of a gem. I never saw this. It's a lot of fun. I want to talk about the ending a little bit, so if you do want to avoid spoilers, you can cut this off here and go watch this movie. I will recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's streaming for free on Tubi if you want to see it. I think people will enjoy this film, despite the fact that it's kind of dumb. It is like a, a really good, bad movie. That's the best way to look at it. So if you keep your expectations low, you'll probably enjoy this one. So Marlboro and Harley eventually figure out they are carrying a tracking device, and they're able to utilize the tracking device to counterattack Alexander and the other security men. And this time, uh, appropriately, they shoot them in the heads, and they're able to defeat them. And this is a pretty funny scene. Harley is notoriously bad with a gun, and they, they play that out for comedy. And then next, the two go after uh, Chance Wilder, they bribe his helicopter pilot to take them to the bank and attack the office. It's kind of a strange scene because they mention changing the lease for the bar, but like just for a moment, and they just end up killing Chance Wilder. And then there's a scene of the two at the rodeo. Marlboro has decided to get back into being a rodeo cowboy or whatever he does. And Harley leaves and picks up a just unbelievably beautiful hitchhiker. I like these characters. It's a little bit unfortunate they couldn't build a better film around them. Don Johnson is great as this like kind of sketchy hustler cowboy guy. And Mickey Rourke plays the whole thing kind of understated. It's really great chemistry for two guys that apparently didn't get along on set. Anyways, I think I talked enough about Harley Davidson and the Marlboro Man. Thanks for listening to me blabber. And uh, if you enjoyed this review, maybe give me a like maybe a subscribe three stars go watch it